I just want to stand for a moment. Do you want to go over it? Uh, sure. Okay, so it's... Uh, yes, I did. Go too short, of course. I know. Uh, you. And this is the last session uh, yeah. of We have the days in my property, but they were all... So welcome. This session is dedicated to having a dialogue concerning the current um, uh, uh, draft of the uh, Honors in the Major Field Program that will be coming before the Senate uh, in February. Um, you all received emails about the history of um, honors in the, this honors and major proposal and how it's been going back and forth between our committee. I'm Larry Engel. I'm the chair of the um, Honors Advisory Committee, which is a faculty committee that's charged with helping to create, supervise, and review honors uh, programs that came into being after the old honors program was um, sunset. Mothballed. <laughs> um, um, we still have grandfathers. It's, it's, so anyway, <laughs> it's being phased out. It's There's being phased out. There's students yes, we still have courses, students who uh, will, will continue to thrive in the, um, in the uh, program that's being phased out. The first phase of replacing the um, the uh, honors program uh, was passed by the Senate and it is now the AU honors program it is a limited 45 group cohort uh, that's uh, comprised of uh, the five uh, federal uh, Frederick Douglass distinguished scholars and 40 um, honor, AU honor students that the committee actually uh, read their um, uh, applications. In fact, the committee read 600 applications over the course of three weeks of February last year uh, to come up with what was yielded. I think we ended up with 30, how many? How big is the core? This it's 42 total. 42. So we. We're, we're in good shape, actually. Um, and the committee will also be reading uh, a good number of uh, applications again this year, and we always need help. It takes place this year between February 16th to March 2nd. Um, and it, we, we find the committee believes that it is uh, very important for faculty to read these applications. Um, because most other schools that have um, op these kinds of uh, small entry, freshman entry um, cohorts do not do that. And Michael has reported that it's been a very, very positive uh, tool in recruitment for um, uh, students. So, um, as a result, we had over 2,700 or about 2,700 applications, and we ended up with 42 or 30, not 37 students accepting in, uh, to the uh, AU Honors Program. And, but that led to a surplus of really, really good applicants, and that led to us creating uh, the AU Scholars Program, um, which we hope. Professor Kim's uh, valuable um, leadership will, will continue to grow. So um, the AU Scholarship Program, the Scholars Program, is part of the overall plan to keep um, high scholarship viable in a variety of communities and systems. So we have a we have AU honors. We have we have Frederick Douglass Distinguished Scholars, we have AU Honors, we have AU Scholarships, we have um, community-based community learning and research, and we have, in a way, the UC College is another living learning community. Uh, so that's, that's big for entry uh, first or freshman students. However, there was a, a big gap 
And that gap had to do with what happens after the first two years of most of these programs, because these programs are designed to, um, uh, for freshmen and sophomore, uh, the freshmen and sophomore clientele, and in particular, look at the um, uh, retention of those students into the junior and senior years. So to that end, we've been trying to develop uh, something uh, that, that honors high scholarship in the major or field program. The first, the first um, proposal for that, about three years ago, when AU honors was before the Senate, as well as an honor and honors in the major uh, was rejected. Honors was accepted, but the Senate sent it back to the committee. Uh, we worked. They sent back the Department of Honors. There was a section called Department of Honors, which was meant to be like the honors in the major. And the problem was we had put so much of our attention into developing the AU honors program that we had not fully vetted the Department of Honors with the university wide community. And so the Senate said, you know, how well does the university wide community know about this? And quite rightfully, I had to say, but I'm hoping they'll like it anyway. And the Senate said no, that they we had to table it and take it back. So we we were convened, uh, and part of our uh, task on the Honors Advisory Committee was to not only work on admissions and other issues related directly to AU Honors, but to come up with a proposal for something of honors in the major. That um, proposal um, was circulated, uh, but was rejected ultimately. Yeah, part of what helped things up was we went through a shift in leadership. So we had several deans that transitioned out and other deans that transitioned in. So a lot of what we were trying to get accomplished got arrested for a while. And yeah, not really standing because it went back. By the time yeah. all the new deans finally got settled, we moved toward this idea of needing to develop an honors in the major, major. and that's when this proposal really started to get to and, and that proposal was very, at the core of that proposal was an interdisciplinary effort um, and honors club. Those were two of the original um, aims um, to distinguish that program from other such honors programs at other peer institutions and beyond. Um, when it came to the administration, as well as chairs and program directors, it was, I guess we could say, not terribly well received. In mainly, some areas it was. Yeah, it was some areas it was. I mean, in some areas it was, but the main issue seemed to be one of resource. It was, it was very, very difficult to see how with the effort being put into honors, scholars, and other similar programs, that anything um, that the committee said at a minimum included a colloquium, or included um, a variety of things that you all saw actually last year, um, would not be sustainable. And one thing that we knew was that from the provost's office, there was not going to be more money going towards any honors in the major. So it was up to the deans and the program directors and the division directors and you know the administrators who were responsible uh, to make sure that it was going to work no matter what it was. So the second proposal uh, was rejected by the provost and the deans. Um, we sat back um, and oh, well, actually, it was after they took it to their communities. So the deans took it to their communities. Right. They tried to make it work, and the sense that they got was some of them could maybe put together some creative interdisciplinary honors and major programs, but others had departments and fields that just didn't feel invested in that. They felt that they could do an honors in the major without it necessarily having an interdisciplinary component. 
And so because there wasn't this real buy-in to everybody having an interdisciplinary colloquia, they asked us to take it back and make it a little more flexible uh, for those units that don't necessarily want to have an interdisciplinary component. Does that, does that sound right? Yeah, yeah uh, it's easily correct me if I'm tired. Um, <laughs> the, the, uh, Michael as well, please. Um, the other issue that I come back to is that um, we wanted it to be, it is not a self-nominating um, system as the old system was. There has to be a recommendation procedure and a proposal uh, to gain access. We did not want it, the, the, the provost is, uh, and deans do not want it to be as large as uh, the other, the, the current major had been. So it was a, it's a, it's, it's, it's a different, it's a different system. So the committee um, came back and said, okay, let's reduce things, let's simplify. And we ended up actually with the one page proposal um, that seems to be that you have right that here. seems to be working. Um, it is not it's gone to the executive mm -hmm. and with the and by executive you mean the executive is a committee, committee of the Senate. Senate. So it's leadership plus chairs. Um, that happened Wednesday was when I was filming in San Diego and I appreciate that Michael and Lynn attended. Um, out of that there was also a suggestion to produce to other documents to accompany, is that correct? Yes, uh, for, uh, the proposal template, so if a unit is ready to propose an honor to the major, we've attached a draft template. It is very rough, it was quickly put together just to give you all an idea of the questions that we would be answering and then just the university-wide criteria. And you'll see some of the questions about the university-wide criteria reflected within the proposal template. So uh, I, I think the key thing, if I may, is, is the resource idea. So uh, it's going to be very important that if you're thinking you'd like to have an honors in the major program, that you have the support of your dean and, uh, and that you have the support of your, in the, co in the case of the College of Arts and Sciences, they're going to, each of the individual departments are going to have to think about the resources needed to support that program. A small department like, I can talk about mathematics, I can say that mathematics could very easily follow this template. They could develop an honors in the major program and they may have one student every three years. So resource wise, for the Department of Mathematics and Statistics, it would not be that difficult to show that within their existing resources, they could manage an honors in mathematics if they chose to do that and if the dean supported it. That's a big if, I'm just using that as, a, as an example. Um, but then uh, this does allow for the potential of some creative programs like um, uh, I think there's been some preliminary discussions between CAS and SOC about a possible interdisciplinary honors. Now it's just preliminary, just sort of batting ideas around, but between SOC and CAS, they would have to make sure that they have the resources, which means they're gonna have to think very deeply about the number of students who can come into this program and how the faculty, it's a huge faculty investment to take on these honors and the majors. Those are the, those are the ones that you really want to mentor. They're gonna have the significant projects. They're gonna require the significant amount of time and resources to uh, be successful and reflect well upon whatever that honors and the major is. So the, uh, the spirit of this is just to make sure that everybody thinks very deeply about this. They think about the numbers that the unit can carry, and if the unit says we can carry 50 students a year, or 10 students a year, whatever that number is, the unit can think deeply about the faculty resources that can mentor those students, the advising that goes along with that, uh, so forth and so on. So this is deceptively simple in many ways. It looks clean and very, very easy, and it can be, but when you put your pencil, I'm sorry, when you put your pencil to the paper, uh, you're really going to have to map it out in terms of having faculty invested in this, and, the, and, and that's what was critical, is making sure you have the faculty buy-in. If the faculty have bought into this, yeah, we want it, woo-hoo, but we can manage five, not ten, you're good. Yeah. You know? 
Uh, also, I think we, we're following the simplicity of the proposal itself uh, because we, we, as a committee, if I may speak generally, we're, we're not interested in telling any um, uh, either major or field proposal, interdisciplinary or, or discipline based, that, that um, we think this is, that, that we're telling you what to do. We want to review it based on the depth of your proposal because we may not be experts in, in your field or in the, in the, uh, the uh, discipline itself, but having the rationale clearly stated um, and clearly having the support of the dean uh, means that we would be reviewing more likely um, the nature of the courses to make sure that it, it's to be distinguished from a course that is not an honors in the major course. However, we have to remember that in the proposal, honors in the, an honors in the major course may be an existing course with that. It, it's, it, we, we really simplified a lot of what we were doing. Um, but it does come back to um, the fact that the proposals will come to the committee, but we have to remember this committee is an advisory committee to the Senate. Should it recommend passage, then the chair of the, of the Senate signs it, and that recommendation goes to the provost who makes a decision on it. We do not say yes or no. We may ask for more information. It's, it's somewhat, I think, going to be similar to how we deal with the graduate and undergraduate curriculum committee, which I'm sure many of you are dealt. That's what this is. Um, we had also did not put in, we were very vague in our proposal on the, 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 the criteria for admission, and we were, we did not actually want to have the GPA, the, the provost felt that felt it was important, but it's really up to, to you guys, to, to, to the creators of the proposals to say, this is what we expect our honors student to look like. So here we have, for instance, on standard uh, for admission, a criteria for the honors major field must have a, a cumulative 3.5, 3 3.67. That may be very onerous from science, so from some of the sciences. And it seems to me we can, you know. Well, on the template, when you actually fill out the proposal template, uh, it says under standards for admission, will all students admitted to the program have at least a 3.67 cumulative GPA in major field? The, the sciences may say no because the average is 3.4. So these are all custom. You know, we, we would, you know, so the science, so you can put a counter argument, or you may say, no, that's too low. It needs to be 3.9. Well, and then in, in the next line, it says, must submit a, a, a written proposal for admission. You know, we, another program may say, a written proposal of X length, but we want to see a portfolio of your graphic art. We want to see an oral uh, presentation or whatever is appropriate for that field or that discipline. So these are minimums, not maximums. So that's important. It might be helpful. Oh, yeah. Kehoe has a question. That's more important. Yeah, I was going to answer your question. So. Okay. I was just going to say, at some point, we might talk about the timeline for returning the proposals mm -hmm. and kind of so at the unit level, one of the key questions for us is what size can we have for our honors program? Because there were discussions about capping, there are clearly discussions about capping the size of the honors and the majors. So what are we talking about? Is there a ballpark? Originally, originally every, uh, in the old days, uh, we were saying 5 to 10 percent of the population of undergraduate. So, but, 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 that has now changed. That is a discussion that we are not in any way involved in. It is now between the deans and the provost. So it's determine. between you and your dean first mm -hmm. to argue that we can have a high quality honors in environmental science 
that, and we know that there will be at least 20 students, which I think would be high, mm -hmm. would be very, very high. Yeah. So you'd probably say five right. students a year. And we know that with five students in an honors and environmental science, we can offer this course or add this supplement. The faculty will form this committee. We're willing to carry it with no additional faculty, no additional resources. We can do that. And see, then if there's another five from another, you know, say from SOC in, in, in environmental filmmaking is one of our concentrations, it may be that aside from having an SOC um, honors, uh, there may be an interdisciplinary potential to build and cohort. So there's a tension there. I mean, larger schools will be able to have larger programs, but in order for the program to really be a rigorous honors in the major program, they can't have hundreds of students. So that's something that has to be worked out between the deans and the provost in terms of the of the resources, and then that that tension is balanced with: Is this really? I mean, you've got 300 honors in a major. Is that really a high quality program? I mean, you know, the, a lot of questions will be asked about that. So we just found we got into this business, and maybe we should state a percentage or a proportion according to the size of the department. It just doesn't make sense. I think we just have to, you know, we have to let the departments create their high quality program, and then weigh the the tensions between what's really a high quality program and how many students they can manage. High quality honors means a lot of faculty mentorship and a lot of faculty attention, so we just can't have these. And then in terms of the timeline, we wanted to start with when the rollout essentially needs to be in order to accommodate the current freshman class, and that is 2016. That's our, the fall 2016 is the rollout date for those honors in the major that will be offered. So there was discussion, Joe, of rolling it out uh, only because uh, uh, Jeff asked about you know whether we could do it in 2015 because there's an eagerness to do that. And at the associate dean's meetings, there was a consensus that we should roll it out together in 2016. So that's where we're. That's our. That's our goal. Others can roll out after, but. But we'd like proposals. We'd like proposals as soon as possible. Starting the semester. So is this honors in the major and separate from, like do you have to be honors? No. Okay, so totally separate, okay, so that makes sense. Uh, AU honors students having completed their first two years may apply for honors in the major or field. Mm -hmm. AU scholars finishing theirs. What about regular students? Yep. Any student. Okay, that's what I meant here, because otherwise you want the numbers, student. yeah. Any yeah. student may apply okay. through the guidelines that you're, okay. Your program provides, okay. and there no may well be some students who are like bloomers who need that opportunity. Well, I mean, it's just like I mean, the the way we do biology, it kind of it lends itself to already doing a lot of these things anyway. So, but because you know, if there's only 45 students in the original honors, there might just be two biology majors in there, so we wouldn't have enough people. So right. As well, an administrator, any, it, people. It, this is not restricted yeah. in any way, shape, okay. or form to any of the honors or scholars. Okay, so this is for students who are applying and are saying, yes, I want to major in this and have honors in this, or is this happening like after my credits? Or oh, this is happening after, uh, during the fall or year. Second semester, I'm sophomore year. So they should spring require the beginning of spring. their second semester, sophomore year, okay. and they should know by the end of their second semester, sophomore year, whether they have been admitted been. to the program or not. Okay. As a rule, now some are you know, may argue for a later admission date, but as a rule, uh, we're saying second semester, sophomore year. And it may, it also may be that it would be an earlier application, but customarily. And so the question is, in the proposal, do you answer why you might want to start that sooner? That's the question. So I follow up. Yes. Um, is there going to be support from the provost office and from the dean's offices in terms of if we have five Spanish honors majors, we can't make that interdisciplinary if it's conducted in Spanish. Would we be able to run a class with five students? That would be up to your dean. That would be up to the dean. Not the provost has said clearly no. 
but five probably mm -hmm. not. Yeah, probably not. That's yeah. a really important question, right? Um, yeah. Because you know we are under such pressure. You know I am scrambling to get my classes to eight or twelve starting next semester. And what do we do if that's you know we're at five or at six? We have a high quality program with the best professor teaching. The only these kids are, like it's just so going to support that. right. And this is a good case of which in which you can identify your advanced courses and you can say, well, we can't manage, we don't have, we have five, we figure we'll have five high quality Spanish students. Yeah. And we can identify an advanced course and add to that a supplement. And you'll notice in the proposal template, it's not just a random supplement that any faculty member can in your program can design. We're asking you to tell us what is that supplement gonna be? What is that advanced course? And then what are you going to expect from the honor student in terms of that supplemental activity into that course? So that helps you to not have to offer an additional course, but then the question becomes, are the faculty who are teaching those Spanish students and managing that supplement, are they willing to carry that workload? And that's where, again, that's where that has to have that faculty buy-in. You know. There's a bunch of questions. We're going to want to, I think there's a real tension. I, I can't hear. I think there's a real tension there. You've heard me say this before, yeah. right? That, you know, we're being told, you know, we have to create these new honors programs, which we're happy to do, but we have to do it with no new resources and new classes have to fill. I, you know, so it's, it's, there's a real tension there well, that I think we're going to continue to gain. Yeah. But we're Just not, you're not necessarily having to fill new classes. No. Well, yeah, but if we wanted to run a separate, if, we wanted if that was your choice, yes. Well, I think that's ideal, right? So yeah. then, yeah. But, but is it possible to make sure that there are enough large classes to help support right. the lower classes right. Right. from a revenue stream? And this might be where some of the uh, some of the cross unit collaborations mm -hmm. can come in. So, mm -hmm. for example, you know, a, a, it doesn't have to be an interdisciplinary course that's right. offered mm -hmm. that several academic units can take advantage of. There might be a research course. Mm -hmm. uh, that could be offered. Mm -hmm. That's an mm -hmm. upper level research course for honor students. And yeah. if that's shared with SBA and with SIS and with COGOD and yeah. students in their honors programs can all enroll in that course, then you're optimizing, mm -hmm. you're sharing a course and you're optimizing your resources. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there, I, I think this is looking for ways to be creative right. and to share resources and yet still offer that high quality yeah. experience. And in fact, when you think about it, you've got yourself an interdisciplinary research course because you've got students from SIS and students from SBA and students from CODA coming together to right. do that would be a whatever it is, wouldn't that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, uh, continue. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> um, two other questions. Um, one is the committee available, and I know you're playing an advisory role, but as we're developing this kind of ongoing conversation, so. We would eat eagerly in the Great. Either virtually or in person. We are meeting well, actually, the beginning of the semester. On the a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Our meetings are going to be on day. Tuesday afternoons. <laughs> to, no, Tuesday at noon. It's, it's 11.45. 11 so we meet yeah. we meet every other week. So we, so every I other week. And we can we can also be days. virtual about it. Okay, you can have uh, any you know you can have a partial application of pre questions. We may not actually have answers, but we can give you information. We can reach out uh, to the provost uh, in office and see where we're at. Um, we want the, the packet to go before the February, February executive committee, the Senate executive committee, so that it can be um, presented to the Senate in February because students are, uh, parents of students and students are uh, pretty much in the freak out stage. Uh, and we want to retain that. So that's well, they're the, nervous. So would this be program, be, I mean, for the major ones, so it'd be starting 18, like 2018-19, or would it be no, starting? No, 2016. We started 16 for the major. So it'd be for students regardless of the starting. Okay. That's my, my third question. Um, in terms of messaging, right, if we're, if we're going into recruitment season now, are we free to say at our recruitment events that we'll be developing an honors in the major program that will be available in fall 2016? I mean, are, are we at that point? 
um, you can say that they're being developed. You, I, I would be very careful to say that FDA has one until it's officially I think approved. You, I, mean, I think you can yeah. say 2016. 2016. For rollout in 2016. Right. And I think you're alluding to that we we told our incoming scholars, you know, this is a pathway to honors in the major mm -hmm. this year, and now we have to freak out because there isn't a honors in the major. So I, right. I want to make sure that. But we're you can say that right. it's in develop, It is yeah. in development, and that that promise, although we're no longer call it a pathway, yeah, is on its way. I, I think that puts us in a weird spot for the two proven position because we no longer have our honors program and we can't make any guarantees about whether there will be honors in the major. So when we have the really high achieving students coming in and they're saying, well, there may or may not be an honors program. And I think whatever the message is, I think we need to be really well, clear that everyone is saying the exact same thing. We are hoping that if this is approved by the Senate in February, yeah. we'll have a better sense of the academic units that think they can put something forward. And if we can get some commitments from the academic units that say they're under development, these are under development, then we can really let the you students know at that point. Yeah. Yeah. If that's too late, then, then I would I would I would recommend I would recommend talking to Scott. Well, they are, these are freshmen. They're freshmen right now, and this is their second semester freshman year. No, you're talking about I'm recruiting talking about next year's class. I'm talking about my preview days, you know. Oh, recruit, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, yeah. 10% yeah. of freshmen begin on preview days. Well, what about, what's your honors program like? Right. And right now, the truthful answer is, when you enter, there is no Right. Unless you got That's in. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Unless you got in. Well, unless you're into scholars, you're going to see their rest. Right? The truthful no. answer right now is we do not have an honors program for you entering in fall 2016. That's, that's a very well, truthful that's answer. Good. But, you know, if that's, again, uh, there's a lot of universities that don't have an honors program. So I, I wouldn't put, if you're marketing, I wouldn't talk about what we don't have. Well, clearly, clearly. <laughs> I, mean, I would suggest talking about what you do have. <laughs> I mean, when you know that I'll spin it. But I mean, it, yeah. you know, I, I want to be really careful about what we do. I, well, that's, my yeah, no. belief is that there is no way that there will not be an honors and major field rolling out in 2016. That's not, no, to me, that's not it. Otherwise, heads will roll. But, but it must go in front of the Senate. It has, has not been put in front of the Senate. No, but it will. When is that printed in January? I'm sorry. February. Second? Or is the first, first Wednesday in February. So, I mean, Michael, if you're asked during one of the preview days, I'm an entering freshman in fall 2016. Is there an honors program? What do you well, think? He doesn't have a problem because he already has one. <laughs> <laughs> but what I would say is that you know, Jessica Waters is the person to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> this is my fear. You know, I would Jessica say, takes a, I would tell them the, the literal <laughs> truth. It is under discussion. Well, and no, we, I don't think it's, I think you'd say it even more mm -hmm. positively. Discussion. Well, it is, it is, that we hope to implement before, them by 2016, and in that year you'll be a sophomore or whatever. But if that high achieving students are considering us and considering Georgetown, yeah. And, but it uh, is I just tell them it's it's before this. It's going to be before the Senate and on its way, you know, whatever, to the program. So one of the things I'm trying to put more of a focus know. on is the you know not every student that comes to AU is going to be an honor student. Period. Okay, when we had the University Honors Program, it was 15% of the students. That's 85% of the students who were very talented who came to AU, not because they could be in honors, but because they wanted the AU experience. So I'd be, I would not freak out about this. A lot of students come to AU because SBA offers that leadership program, because SOC has so many wonderful things they do, because CAS does, you know, Students want to study in the Department of History because the best historians are, are in that department. Uh, you know, so there's, I'm not in a panic about it because most students come to AU because of the AU experience. Um, the, uh, what I'm more in a panic about is providing the skills that all undergraduates need to be productive. And I'm more concerned with providing undergraduate research, scholarship, creative experience for first year students as soon as possible. If they're hungry for it and they want to do it, let's do it as soon as possible. And that's what the AU Scholars is about. That's what the CERS 
uh, scholars are about. We're doubling the size of that, and what those students are doing their first year is phenomenal. But not forget honors. CBRS. Hey. The CBRS would be honors to shame. They are doing phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> In, as freshmen. As freshmen. Okay. Oh, they are they are <laughs> taking they are taking the ball and really running with it. So we but but that's because we're building this culture of undergraduate research for the first year students. University college. We had over we had six hundred students. 450 wanted to have spring research experience. 450. We could accommodate 230. So undergraduates, they, I mean, you can talk about the fact that we should go honors to major, but really what they want to hear about is how soon can I hit the ground running with undergraduate research? What's my first year experience about? How soon can I link up with a faculty member? How soon can I have an experience that has me working with other students and solving a real problem? That's what they want to hear. So, so my inclination is that if something doesn't exist, I wouldn't talk about it. Right? I would say we don't we don't have an honors and major program, um, but we do have these opportunities. Mm -hmm. what, I, what I've heard a lot from um, freshman students under the university honors program was um, why did you know? I'm not, I didn't get into your university honors program, and if there is an honors program here, and I'm not in it, then I don't want to come to AU. I got a lot of that kind of conversation from students. But now that it's only 45, it's like, yeah, I, you know, the odds are so low of getting in, I don't feel badly about that, so I'm going to look at AU for what it offers. Um, and, and then next year, too, next year we can start bragging about the honors and the major programs that exist. But I still think that it's, it's fair to say where we are in the process. We're moving very quickly towards an, an intended rollout for an honors and major work in 2016. So, Lynn. So, I'm sorry, Joe. Joe, yeah, that's I appreciate the, uh, the, the advisory committee putting this together. It's very helpful. Um, if I'm reading this template right, you can develop an honors and a major program with a minimum of two advanced courses, which may or may not already exist, which may or may not already be for honor students. And then there's a some sort of research, scholarly research project on top of that. And that's your honors and a major program? You can, that is the no. you can do it with two? We may not have, no, we may have not have saved, well, I'll have to look at that language again, but it, the advanced courses may exist, but if all, if all students take those advanced courses, mm -hmm. there has to be some component in that existing advanced course that the honor students have to complete above and beyond. Right. Okay. So a uh, supplement. Yeah, yeah. supplement or, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. But but the, so the number is a minimum of two plus the, the scholarly research project, yeah. which could be a capstone or something. Yes. Right. That's minimum. I mean, is that honors and the major like that, that kind of? No, the, that kind there's of quite a, there's I mean, no that's quite a few programs that have nine credits for honors and the major. It's the honors and the major, and it's the capstone. And as a matter of fact, there are some that just focus everything on the capstone experience. Yeah. They award it based uh, only on the that was capstone nine experience. Honors in the major was nine just for the honors in the major, and uh, and that's what they they pin it on is that student's research. So I had entertained the notion or tried to broach the notion: let's forget about the courses, let's forget about all that, and let's put all the focus on a capstone. And if the academic units have identified a student who's a sophomore that's really cranking and gearing up for a stellar capstone, let's just make it the capstone that awards that student the honors in the major, but that didn't fly. Some of the students we've heard, some of the student testimony we've heard in this process, they, they really like the colloquia. They, they think the honors Absolutely colloquia as they them. exist mm -hmm. now, if you will, yeah, we, we know. the old honors program. And they want more of that. It seems yes, like they that's why we try, that's, that's why we why put we, it in our proposal in the first place, but it didn't yeah. fly. Well, I think it should fly. Um, well, some will. I I some, think. I'm sure some will, but not as some will. will. Can, no. The other question I have is, is a resource problem. Sure. And it goes to that very point. Um, can some units opt out of this? I mean, like, whoa. This, this is not a mandatory request. No. No. This is a proposal from a unit or school or units from so, yeah. many schools. So yeah. the answer is yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then and finally, the review by you all, the, the honors advisory committee, what does that entail? I mean, are you saying? What are you looking for, or what do you expect to be looking for in that review of the proposal by the unit, 
but so they're an outside team of people outside you know, that are looking at your proposal and they are going to make a recommendation to the provost but before they make a recommendation to the provost they may look at it and say you know it's uh why are you saying that 2.5 is okay for entry to honors in the major? You know, they may ask the unit questions about, oh, you said this supplement, but we don't understand how it really distinguishes. So they'll be the ones who will go back to the academic unit and say, we're not clear on how this is really offering something that's distinctive. Especially and Mary was about to say something too, I think. Oh, I was just thinking that, um, but there are two things in particular that we'll be looking for. One is pretty high admission standards so that the programs aren't too large. Though, again, the units are going to know best what size fits their purpose. And the other is um, we want the programs to be pretty rigorous. Very the rigorous. committee agrees. Yeah. So uh, the, there may be a minimum requirement of two courses, but that's a minimum requirement. And the capstone fly, experience should can, be it would fly demanding. Through, but if it's not demanding, if in those two courses or if the capstone is not significant, then it will, it will recommend that it pass. What I, just, I just believe that the so academic so units can communicate what they believe will be that extra stuff step that's a mile above what they're they're, even their smart students, they're really smart students too. I think they can articulate. We know what an honor student in our field looks like. So it's actually and an honor student, student in our field will be able to do the following, and they can describe yeah. that. One of the reasons I one of the reasons I ask is that it, the the proposal form says that before this is set in motion, the dean must receive prior approval from the provost based on sort of generic plans. So but that's what happens on all program changes. That's what happens on uh, new, new certificates. Programs, new right. The new dialogue, the dialogue starts between the dean, the faculty member, or members go to the dean's office. The dean goes to the provost. Provost says, "Yeah, I, I, we know that." And so that's exactly the same. Thing. I have another nuts and bolts question. I'm sorry, Keo. Oh, Keo, that's right. So I'm going to go back to what Jessica was saying. So would you be, and this is directly to you, Lynn, would you be okay if I said my goal as a chair is to have in place an honors program in the major for environmental science by fall of 2016? Would you be okay with that if I said that? Well, I'd be terribly titillated with that idea. Okay. Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, no, but I think he means to prospective students. Yeah, to prospective students. When I when oh, I was freshman day. prospective students. Yeah, freshman day. Oh, at freshman day? No. Uh, I mean, a preview day. I'm sorry. A preview day. They're standing with. What are you? What are you what's the statement? And and the, the parent says, goal. "Do you have a, a honors in the majors program?" And I say, "Well." My goal, we don't have one right now, but my goal is to have one in place yeah. by the yes. But what you say and what they hear are two different things, right. so I would not be comfortable with that. Okay. Because when we advertised it as scholars in the scholars program, we said pathway for application to honors. Mm -hmm. That's what we said. It's written on the web page, pathway for application, because we didn't want to presume that just because a student was in scholars, they had to go into environmental science uh, honors. And, but what they heard, and what the students told me, I mean, they said, yeah, you may have said that, but what we heard. <laughs> so, you know, I, no, I wouldn't be comfortable with that. I think the better thing to say, uh, you know, is not to say right now. To say we have a wonderful environmental science program. You're extremely, now, one thing you can say is for any environmental science student that, that wants to go above and beyond, you have the faculty that will help that student go above and beyond. You say that right. I mean, you would say that with all comfort, right. all the comfort in the world, and I would be thrilled if you said that. Or if you could say that, I think that's good. So, if we're both teeing up, is there sort of version of one of those new things? What do you say? What do you think? Probably like what do you think? Every school, every department, every chair, every day that a freshman day has to be a freshman day. Okay. Okay. I'm a little more. I'm going to get a little sign with honors and major in a circle and a cross. <laughs> 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 well, again, I think. I 
turns a little brown well, and it indicates. Well, I don't want to be, yeah, I don't want to be faced with questions that I was faced with from the CDRS students, but they were wonderful. They were so smart. I could talk to them about it, and they listened. This is not fun. process might be that you know, annually the department meets and, and together decides who will be in the honors program based on what they've been seeing in their classes. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a completely closed process that originates from faculty, what they've seen in their classes. So when you're five, I can imagine other years departments years. who would say, no, there's, there's an application form, you apply for and we'll have that confidential. So we're really leaving it up to departments how they want. So I think the first step you can just start doing the proposal and you can come and you know, you get it through the CAS and you can have an honors program for our teachers. We don't have to, we can sit on that if you want us to go through this kind of administrative thing and if there's a year we just want to admit this one student to a stellar and then we'll see how that goes. 
telling us that uh, you know for instance for their capstone we not might not be able to make that class right because it would be low, lower than the minimum enrollment and therefore professors would have to take that on as an extra load at the time that's what you're saying okay I just wanted to or reaching out to other small departments allow want you to bring that, that offer combined capstone phone. And still, the course is needed. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, part of, part of this is the realism, the, the reality that there are no currently no um, revenue streams.
SOC or SIS or SBA. SIC Reasons. 
But one of the most important is retention. Mm -hmm. Students like to, like she was saying, they like to parents, parents want it. Parents want it. Mm -hmm. In a way, it's a throwback. It's a throwback. Yeah. It's out of necessity. Yeah, many of us went to institutions with our parents. Parents and prospective students understand it. And they want it as a potential. Right. And there are, as you know, students who are really not motivated to accept this subject in depth and achieve it as well. So I think we're responding to that. Yes. I mean, students, all our students are very good. So my yeah. first feeling is you're almost creating tears in the university with a lot of good students. So I think it's almost. Well, having all these different programs at the freshman level, I sound like when, but it really tells because they can choose what fits them best. And luckily they have one person who's accepted the honors program, which has to go into the university college. So, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, so it's, it, we're facing some real serious challenges. 